Okay, so we're back. The next installment of the Igor tutorial series um, will be um, where, I, where I show you how to make graphs. Uh, this is the primary reason for you guys using Igor, is it's a pretty powerful graphing tool. makes really nice, pretty graphs. Um, so we're going to start off with a simple time series plot. Um, and so to do that, we're going to click on Windows and New Graph. Um, so we'll scroll down to the time. We'll go up to CO PPV. We're going to make a time series graph of CO. I'll click Do It. And here's your graph. Of course, we're probably going to want to make this a bit prettier. We can uh, change the color if we'd like to. So the way I get into that menu for, for changing the color and whatnot is I double click onto the white area of the screen. Um, I can switch to markers, for example. So it's just dots. I can switch to dots. I can do lines and markers. A lot of fun stuff. So anyways, I'll just go back to lines. Uh, and yeah, so then I can so then I can go ahead and edit my axes by right clicking on the white area, going to axis properties. I can go to axis range to change um, the range of the graph. Um, I can um, go to axis label to label the different axes. So I'll label the bottom axis PST for Pacific Standard Time. I'll label, label the left, left axis CO parts per billion. And then the other thing I can do is go over here to the uh, axis tab and mirror the axis. So that just puts a line on the very edge of the graph and basically boxes it in, which is kind of a nice effect. Um, I can also switch the bottom axis to date and time format. So you can see here that it's now in date and time instead of if I go to linear, it's just the, the big number again. So I'll switch that to date and time. I can click do it and it'll apply all my changes. I can right click on the graph and click add annotation to um, add an annotation box that I can use as a title. So there we go. There's a simple time series in about 30 seconds or so. Like, or so. Um, I can go ahead and also make a graph with multiple species on different axes. Um, the first way I'll do that is by putting one on the left axis and one on the right axis. So I'll go ahead and minimize this CO graph. I'll click on Windows, New Graph um, to make a graph of NOx and ozone. So I'll put NOx on the left axis. So first I'll select the time as the X axis or the X wave. I'll select NOx as the Y wave. I'll click do it, and there is my NOx plot. I'll then go to the graph tab on the top, click append traces to graph. I'll go down to the time. I'll select ozone, and then I'll go to the axis tab and click on the right axis. So now um, we're appending ozone to the right axis. So I'll click do it, and here we go. We have ozone over on the right. Um, to make this graph nicer, neater, and prettier, I can Double click on the right on the white area. I can switch, change the color of NOx, change the color of ozone. They're sort of unique. Um, I can right click, go into axis properties. I can label my axes. One thing to note here, if I want to do subscript, I can click on special, click on subscript, type in whatever my subscript is, and then click on normal to go back into regular typing mode. If I want to do it sort of fast hand, I can um, type in a backslash B to go into subscript, and then backslash M to go back to normal. Pretty simple there. I can label my bottom axis. And I'll go over here, and then just go ahead and make sure I mirror my axis. And then I can um, switch, or I can edit my axis ranges again. Typically, it's good to not have your traces right up against the edge of your range. Click do it. And there we go. There's our graph. Um, one important thing if you have multiple traces on your graph is to add, add a legend. So I'll right click on the white area again, go down to add annotation. I'll select legend from this top um, tab. And so here, the label is this part outside of the parentheses. So the part inside the parentheses here is telling it to make this line and then the part of the, of the uh, after the parentheses 
is the uh, label for the uh, for the ledger. So very simply, I can click do it here after I'm done, and now I have a legend that I can put anywhere I want on the graph. I can also make a title. For example, stick this up here, and we have the beautiful time series graph um, for, for ozone and NOx. Alrighty. So the next type of time series graph I can make is one where we have traces stacked on top of each other. Um, and so I'm, what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to make a graph of NO, NO2, and NOx. Um, so first I'll select um, the time for the X wave once again, and I'll select NO as the uh, Y wave. But what I have to do, the trick here is to make a new axis. So I'll make this, call this one NO, I'll click OK, and I'll click do it. So here we have our NO graph. Then I will append a new trace to this graph. I will select NO2. Um, I'll make a new axis once again. I'll click OK and I'll click do it. Then I will make a third axis for NOx. And there we go. So all three of our traces are on our graph. Obviously this looks absolutely awful right now. So we'll go into our axis properties um, to make this better. We'll label our axes really quick while we're here. Okay, and then um, I guess we can also set our axis ranges while we're at it. Alrighty, and so then we're going to go over to the axis tab. Um, and so the way that you um, s separate these axes is you use this draw between function. So if I wanted to put NO on the bottom, essentially this is the percentage of the vertical uh, graph re area that's going to be taken up by each trace. So if I wanted to separate the three, I might draw NO on the bottom between 0 and 30. Then I might draw NO2 in the middle between 35% and 65%. And then I might draw a NOx on the top between 70 and 100%. So you can see what that's done is it's separated all of these different traces from each other and drawn them stacked um, one on top of the other um, with 5% in between, which is nice. And the other thing to know is this distance from margin, um, you can set that to determine where your actual axis is going to be positioned. You can also drag your axes around, but it's much easier to get them in the right place, and I'll get them all in the same place if you just use this distance from margin thing. I like to use zero, but you know, you can use a positive number and push it off the screen if you want to, or use a negative number and push it way to the right. It's up to you. Zero is my favorite, but to each his own, his or her own, excuse me. And I will go ahead and set them all to zero here. There we go, and I'll click do it to um, set everything up. Then I will move all of these labels um, over to the left side of the axes. Okay, and so here we go. Um, I guess the other thing I forgot to do in here was, well, I didn't label these very well. Just setting a bad example. Um, but also, um, I need to mirror the axes. And also label the bottom. Okay, so now we have our graph. So now we have our graph here. We can change the colors so that they're all different. Okay, and so then one other tool you can use to, to uh, make your graph a little prettier is you can hit graph, you can click on show tools, and now you have the option to put text, lines, shapes, whatever you want on your graphs. So you can make lines, sort of connect these, this, 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 these disjointed axes over here. So what did I do? Oh, 
well, you get the picture there. Um, you can also put line on the zero to um, separate the different parts of the graph as well. Keep in mind, though, if you um, make these graphs bigger or smaller, the lines might not necessarily stay in the right place. Actually, it looks like they're doing pretty well here. Um, but yeah, so that's how you that's how you draw on graphs. The other thing you will you want to know is you're not going to be able to do anything really to your graph. You know, for example, I'm right clicking here, and you can see nothing's happening until you click this button, and then you can get back to editing your graph as normal. Um, okay, so how long have we gone on this video? Ten minutes. So we can do one more thing here. Um, I am going to now show you how to make a correlation plot. Um, correlation plots are handy um, for correlating either um, two different species um, or correlating um, the same species that are measured by two different instruments to see how well they were or were not working. Um, so to make a correlation plot, you simply just plot one species against the other. So we're going to plot NOx, CO against NOx. So here we have NOx in parts per million, we have CO in parts per million. So we'll just go ahead and put NOx as the X, CO as the Y. We'll hit do it. We have our nice correlation plot here. We can label our axes. Um, we can change the range here as well. And now we can um, change this to markers so that we can actually have uh, points for our scatter plot instead of the silly lines everywhere. So now we have a nice scatter plot. Uh, we can then um, do a linear fit to this data by going into analysis, clicking on curve fitting. Um, we're going to want to select a line for this application, but if we wanted to do a polynomial fit, a Gaussian fit, exponential fit, there's lots of options in this in the software. We just want to make sure we select the two wa the two waves that we have plotted here. So we're going to have CO, and it's not NO, we have NOx. Um, and then we'll just click Do It. And so we have our fit parameters here. I'll just increase the line weight on this here to um, make this look a little better. Um, so we have our fit parameters. So we have our intercept is 159, and our slope is 9.3. So I can put a annotation on the graph, y equals 159 plus 9.3x. Okay, there we go. And then we can get rid of this. Um, so to find your r-squared, you can look down here. So the r-squared of this fit was 0.53. It's an important piece of information to include. And so, as you just saw, to uh, the, the you can do superscript by doing backslash s, or you can go into special and find it that way too. So I can add that to our little thing, and so here we go. We can call this one um, co t or whatever you want to call it. So there you have it. That's how you do a correlation plot. Um, so that'll do it for this installation of our Igor tutorials. Um, hopefully the next video will be the last one where we wrap up uh, the fine little uh, pieces of analysis that you can do using Igor. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.